once again, Messieurs of the Ritwit, the great Gaston Creon de Papier has returned for another sponsored advertisement and another chunk of change to give to these fine folks at the Ritwit. And we really appreciate it. I certainly do, anyways. Glad your opinion of me has improved over the years, especially ever since the pizza shop. I'm like a fine wine, wouldn't you say? That is the most ridiculous statement I have ever heard in my life, Monsieur Donald. I merely wanted to reach out to all the millions of weekly listeners that reading podcast of yours gets and show them the wondrous grandeur of my latest narrative culinary creation. Yes, yes, we totally get millions of listeners. We sure do. Did you say something, Donald? Was I misinformed? about the number of listeners. No, no, we totally get millions of listeners. We sure do. Please, please keep giving us money for these advertisements. Please, please. Ugh, if you insist. May I introduce listeners of this podcast, Gaston Creon de Papier's microwavable short stories. Not everyone has the time to cook a magnificent and epic novel with cuisine de histoire. Not everyone can stuff these delicious pizzas in a single sitting. If all you want is just a taste of the great story at a more manageable length, then Gaston's microwavable short stories are for you. But didn't your old story cooking ingredients take seconds to cook? Who doesn't have time for that? Do you want the money or not, Monsieur Donald? I do, I do, you're right, sir. Serve these stories at parties, at book clubs, at writing workshops. Impress everyone with the power of these easily digestible short stories. From recollections of characters past to exciting tales of the present, these ingredients can help you create whatever short story you can think of and show them to the world. We provide the ingredients and ship them to you, so you can enjoy these short stories whenever the time comes. Sounds great, Gaston. I'm sure our listeners would love to- (laughs) Sorry I'm late, Donald. I lost my pocket monster, got caught in a magical girl fight, and just barely slipped past a storm of kaiju and super mechs. You know, the standard stuff that people deal with here in Japan. David, come on, we're in the middle of an ad here. That is no problem, Donald. I have always greatly respected Monsieur David. His work is the prime example of literary excellence I strive for with my cuisine de histoire. What? Wow, really? Oh, oui, monsieur. Come, try some of these microwavable short stories I just cooked. They were made with the personal tragedy and the Victorian era ingredients, topped with the heavy themes of the familial seasoning. Okay, sure. (sighs) Wow, that was... That was the most moving, poignant, beautiful short story I ever have the privilege of eating. Excellent as always, Gaston Creon de Pipia. My compliments to the chef. Oh, merci, Monsieur David. This is exactly why I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. I think I will give all the money for this advertisement to you, David. Really? Come on! Thank you very much, Gaston. I will cherish your generosity always, Monsieur. The pleasure is mine, Monsieur David. To all the millions of wonderful listeners of the retweet. Bon appetit! Enjoy these microlavable short stories from the great, the stupendous, the magnificent Gaston Crayon de Papier. Welcome, fellow nerds, to another episode of The Ritwit, the show where 90% of the time is spent twitting about negative 10% of the content, leaving the remainder for 110% of it. Also, we're better than you listeners. Somehow, that, that <laughs> was a real mind screw, what you were just saying there. <laughs> I was like, whoa, negative 10 percentiles. Ah. I'm not a math person, though. Basically, it means that we spend so much time BSing that we have to cover 110% oh. of the content because we oh. somehow went that negative makes sense. in okay. the remaining. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyways, All right, so- this is the third of our set about... Uh, yes. Outside of your main story stuffs, we talked about prologues already. We've talked about interludes already and other things. Please go listen to them. Yes, please. Uh, but we're on the third of our set, so we're going to go ahead and do our regular segment. What we at the Rich Witch have read. Right. Ritz. Yes, we are. And like guess what? I'm honors. first. Yeah. No, I don't know why I said that so mean. Like, I'm so I apologize, <laughs> David. <laughs> 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 this is my life. This is every time. All right, go ahead. You know, I you know, for all of our all of our skits, like I pep you up so much and I 
push me down so much. So consider this payback, I guess. <laughs> like, the... <laughs> Well, it's just like this last one, the one we have for this episode, the Crayon de Papier one. Like, he loves you and he hates me. What? Yeah. I wrote that. So. I, think, I think it's just, I, I think it's just that he's overly familiar with you and I don't show up well, nearly like, what about the I'm grateful one for where his support. I wrote, where we wrote, where we're catching all the idea fish. You caught all of them and I didn't even catch one. That is true. That is true. And what about the one the, we the, did... Wait, is it this last? The one? universe. Oh no, we... the universe has a sense of okay, justice. Okay, well, guys, wait, uh, wait till you hear the one for the next episode. <laughs> for the one afterwards. Oh no! It's, 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 let me just say it's real ranting. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Real, real ranting indeed. Yes. Get excited, listeners. <laughs> well, that's right. We didn't have any last episode, did we? No, we didn't. <laughs> Maybe we had a few. <laughs> no, we had a few. No, welcome. we had one. Or, no, we had one. I think we had one at the beginning. So, um, Maybe we had one. Let's see if we do none for this one right, other anyway. than that one. No, no cheap plug. Well, we just did. Well, no cheap plug like the ding <laughs> sound effects. I mean, I don't know. Ding? Uh, we'll see. Anyway, what, do you, what have you read? <laughs> I've mainly just prepared for selling my books at the Denver Starfest, a Comic-Con style convention where I've obtained an author booth. So, uh, obtained, yeah, such a I mean, big well, thing. Paid for, obtained, whatever. <laughs> potato, potato. So, basically, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be selling copies of Megazork and the two sequels that's out, that are out so far to a huge crowd of nerds with posters of something, illustrations, checking out the table. And I have these uh, little uh, dinosaurs, you know, a bunch of little dinosaurs I'm going to get that I don't mind people stealing. <laughs> so, Ooh, that's intriguing. Um, yeah, and, and uh, Natasha's going to be there, my illustrator. And she's going to be present, and she will be adorning a big dinosaur costume. It's the uh, inflatable T-Rex that you've undoubtedly seen on your Facebook feeds. So, it should be great. Ah, uh, so when you say posters, did you actually, like, take the illustrations and blow them up to posters? Yes, and I also colored them. That's really cool. Thanks. So, wait, you colored them? Yeah, I colored them. Which makes more sense yeah, than I colored coloring, them. I suppose. Yeah, right? I colored them through so Photoshop. So, you colored them, so. and then you blow it up. How many, how many posters do you make them? I only have uh, two, but that's okay. If you guys want to see, um, well, two two different, yeah, two, wait, two different styles. No, no, two different posters. I have posters. one of one dinosaur, one of another dinosaur. I don't have a lot of space on this table, so I also I also need a poster for like how much the books books are going to be costing, you know, what all that stuff. So, uh, so you have to you have to give them that information too. Yeah, and they have to have room for wait, all the books. So you're on the not table. so you're not giving away these posters or selling the posters. You're just they're just decoration. They're just decoration to get people's interest. Okay. So yeah. I mean, come on! That'd be a really cool. That'd be a really cool thing to buy. That's nah, just me. Anyway, don't worry. Uh, about we'll see how it thing. goes. Like, I, this really is not cool, going to be though. my last one of these. I'm assuming. So, if people wanted that one, if a lot of people really say, hard. "Hey, I really want to get that," I'll be like, "Okay, I'll get them for next time." So, <laughs> so how many uh, how many books are you bringing with I'm you? I'm going to have a hundred. Fifty of the first book, twenty five of each sequel so far. <laughs> Okay, makes sense. Get him started on the first one. Yeah, and More I'm going to have a little just, thing that's I mean, like, like, you can buy individual books for 15 bucks, or you can buy all three for 30 So A package deal. Yeah. I was going to say, if you had if you had the means that creating like a box set, even though it's My not mom like full really full, wants could... to do that once the final book comes out. I was going to say, yeah, you probably should wait for the final book to be out first. Right. But yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, so this is not. I'm not trying to help you plan Starfest. You, you're on top of it. Right. Just, well, actually, I'm by the time uh, this episode comes out, it, it will have already happened. It's gonna. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Because uh, so yeah, I'll be sure to update you guys in a few episodes later about how well I did. <laughs> exactly. And if you so hear keep, nothing, you gotta keep listening all the way to then, listeners. And if you hear nothing, listeners, assume it went poorly. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, nah, it's, or i just forgot so how know? many so so starfest you you say you're trying to sell 100 books is this literally all one day it's three days uh four hours the first day and 10 hours of each of the other days to round up to a full 24 hours <laughs> so wow that's a long time to be sitting in a booth i'm going to be taking plenty of de-stressifying pills <laughs> to ah. bring some lunch <laughs> and Bring some lunch. Well, yeah, I mean, 10 hours. Holy crap. That's like you eat breakfast, you go, and you get lunch in the middle. So is, it, so is there is there a set schedule that you're exhibiting? Yes, there is a, a set time? schedule. There, there is a... No, they they have people. They have the times that authors want to be there for a uh, certain time. So everybody everybody's going to be there for a total of 24 hours, but they if have they their choose to. window on Like, some day. of them might want to not want to be there for the whole time. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Well, and my... my 
my question, and I, I wasn't sure if you'd like signed up for a certain time to have the booth. No, I mean, and somebody else you pay for the booth there or whatever. Or... You pay for the booth and you can use it for up to this amount of time. So if you want to get your money's worth, you're there for the whole time, basically. So fair enough. And that's why you're splitting it out for three days as opposed to. Well, no, th- those are the, th- those are the, know, those are the hours per day. So. Oh, so everybody is doing four hours on that one day and then 10. Yes. Hours yes. The, 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 cause the first day is the Friday. So it's a, uh, Five to five p.m. to ah, nine p.m. So it's so so it's the evening. Yeah, yeah, and then and then the other days are like eight a.m. to six p.m. So, have you practiced your signature? Yes, I've done that plenty of times for for uh, giving <laughs> uh, out books. So yeah, I have. Good. Um, good. I'm going to have also have You're my cards. Ready to become there. a star at Starfest. Yeah, well, I'm also going to have a little thing full of my uh, cards that'll have links to. You know, my website, which you can get my other books and listen to this podcast. So, exactly. Oh, great. They'll be advertising me too. No. Yes. Be prepared. <laughs> be prepared be for deluge of fan mail. Yes, our teeth and ambitions are bared. Be prepared. Sorry. Thank you, Scar. No anyway. problem, Mufasa. <laughs> no, wait, no, Mufasa didn't hear that song. If he heard. <laughs> If you heard that song, it'd be a very different movie. You'd be like, you're playing to do what <laughs> to me? <laughs> well, that and that and the allusion to the fact that you're the reason I die. It's just, just... You're playing to do no. what to me? Bro- little brother, we need a big talking to. <laughs> I'm also going to... God, Lee, the love, this, this love that I feel is so strongly, like, tinged with hate. <laughs> Oh, indeed. Anyways, that's what I've read. It's not real. Again, we're stretching the definition of ridding, but it's it's, it's stuff helping advertise. Well, I mean, it, it's advertising by other ridding, so. Yeah. Anyways, what have you read? And hey, I mean, yes. you've been focused on that. Yes, so. yes. Uh, yeah, I have been, uh, I'm excited to announce yes. that Starburst Season 1 is almost done. <gasps> Good job. <laughs> Uh, my co-author and I have plans for a season two, and because we are going to a season two, we need a new villain character. Ah. And so to prepare that, <laughs> I've been prepping a character biography. Nice. And we'll introduce this guy in the next episode that I'm going to write. Okay. Which I want to I want to nail down the biography before I write the episode. Of course, by the time that this airs, I'll probably be done with the entire episode because I'm really excited and the biography is just about nailed down now. Right, right, right. In addition to that, I've compiled some loose lyric and poetry bits that I, I actually I actually have this Notepad app on my phone. Nice. And I would literally when I was struck with inspiration i'd I'd put them down (laughs) and i compiled them onto a document on the computer so that way you know heaven forbid something happens to the phone right back up the document so i can have computerized files of them right right i had i had this really fun limerick about uh spring i was inspired i went on a uh in japan there is the annual like sakura uh, cherry blossom blossoming time nice and it's very short okay the life of these the life of these like i think last time we talked up. you wanted to go out and but, look at the cherry blossoms <laughs> so yes no it, it was it was beautiful uh and while i was out walking i was inspired to do this limerick and i'm gonna see if i can find it because it's just i'm gonna read it on air long. nice if i don't have it i'm i will if i have it the cherry blossoms were pretty then um, they were yes <laughs> oh <laughs> that is not what I did. The cherry blossoms were pretty. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm feeling quite witty. Un- and they are quite red. And now I am dead. And now my life is will crappy. <laughs> so <laughs> there's my limerick oh. about cherry blossoms. Well, it wasn't expressly about the cherry blossoms so much, but right. I do remember the first the first couplet, the wonderful colors of spring. The ver- no, the, the various colors of spring, they are such a wonderful thing. They stick in the eye as the seasons go by, such a marvelous and colorful fling. Nice. Very good and very pretentious, just as poetry should be. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you down on poetry? We had, we had a guest host on poetry. For more on that, please listen to episode... 22. Uh, two, 22. Wait. Yes, 22.
Okay. <laughs> Ding! <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so I came up with that limerick. I was actually pretty impressed. Oh, uh, that's the all syllable right. count yeah, is almost... Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I, I mean, it's not... It's better than it's I would do. Like, great, I might... Great. Uh, good job. It's not great, great, but the syllable the syllable count is almost identical nice. enough that it worked. Well, there you go. Um, so, yeah, it was it was really fun. And, and they were really pretty. Like, I would I would show you pictures, but A, we don't have video, and Donald hasn't even seen them yet, so... I, I'll like take your word for it, it, that they're quite good. So. It was... It was really cool. No, that park had the park had so many trees, and they were all in full like pink blossom. And that nice. pink color is such a nice. It's rare because the literally the blossoms last like only two weeks. Oh, at most. Nice. It definitely Rain, is. Wind knock them over, and then the and the the thing that's cool about the trees themselves is that those blossoms are you know simply stage one because the rest of the year that they have leaves. They're very nice green leaves right. that follow the pink buds. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And the people of Japan are absolutely in love with those. And they have these things called hanami. Hana is in Japanese means flower. Right. So hanami is like this flower viewing party. And they'll go to local parks where they have lots of sakura trees and stuff and have picnics and whatnot while the pink buds are in the air. And it's really, really cool. Um, I was invited to go to a couple this year. I was not able to take them up on the opportunity and that's why i went on the walk <laughs> to go see and i've got several good pictures in my phone of blossoming cherry trees it was really neat oh, but i'll be happy to see them that has nothing to do with well i mean i mean uh the poet the poem that came from that is written well, i was gonna say you're not about. god you didn't the write the other cherry thing, blossoms <laughs> i did not write the cherry blossoms no uh the other thing that i've been working on lately uh, i've been doing translating work Yes. I received, I, I had an opportunity to try playing the traditional Japanese instrument called the shamisen mm -hmm. recently. Never heard of it. The shamisen is a really, really cool, uh, really cool instrument that's played along with uh, a lot of like theater type things mm -hmm. and Japanese folk tale type stuffs. It's a three stringed instrument that is plucked with this special tool called a bachi. And it has a very iconic sound that most people in Japan are familiar with. I'm and assuming so I play, if I heard it, I'd be like, oh, I know that. Ironically, one. I, I got that. to play a song called... I, uh, I'm i pretty sure you would if you've seen like any form of media that has J Japanese influence. But right. that said, one of the most famous songs, and it's awfully topical because of the season, I got to play a song called Sakura. Nice. Which, <clears throat> Sakura is cherry blossom. But anyway... Um, while I was there, I was given this packet of information about the thing, and I've been going through it and trying to translate, mm -hmm. you know, to share with people back home about what I did and more about the shamisen and whatnot. So obviously that qualifies as well. Right. Uh, other various translation type stuffs at the office have been going on in my mind as well. Right, right. I am eagerly churning my mind to continue with this mythical collaboration we keep, uh, you know, mythologizing <laughs> that we're actually talking about, uh, that we both have some authorship over. Unfortunately, I don't have it in my hands yet because I'm still waiting on I will try and bug to him to, me. to be like, please, please. If you're listening to the podcast, buddy, you know where to send it. Thanks. I'm actually going to see you, him because we're going to see, uh, just before Denver Starfest, we got tickets to see Avengers Endgame. So we're going to see that together, Ooh. and I'll do my best to be like, hey, have you sent it over? And he'll be like, no. I'm like, why haven't you? Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, don't be an a-hole about it. Anyway, so yeah, I'm uh, doing that. Also, <laughs> I always have this, when I have free moments and I'm just standing there thinking, I will always come up with like these great scenes right. or dialogues between characters, but have absolutely no payoff because I never get them down right, right. and consequently <laughs> forget them all. Well, at least you got those ideas in your head. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm not thinking. It's just that I'm not writing. <laughs> well, get on it. Uh, speak speaking of writing. Well, I was going to say, speaking of not writing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this week we are talking about the insul insulary stuff. I can't pronounce this word. It's hard for me. <laughs> the word the word is ancillary. Ancillary. Um, it basically... Basically, it means any supplements. Yes. So, like, this is material that is tangentially related, but it's not within your main story. Obviously, we talked about prologues. We talked about interludes. This is stuff that, you know, you're talking, like, the doorstop size encyclopedias. The special edition versions of certain fantasy books that have, versions. like, the exclusive, you know, uh, 
forwards and afterwards, or like the like information about the world, you know, and sure, exactly. I mean, you've got maps and stuff yeah. like that, and atlases and whatnot. All of those things are ancillary. All of them provide additional information extra content that hardest of core fans will appreciate right. and buy like uh one thing that surprised me when i was home not last time but a couple of times ago i found out that my brother has the encyclopedia for the song of fire and ice nice. i didn't even know he was into that at all oh, well, but he's got the encyclopedia maybe for when as soon as game of thrones <laughs> like, came out he was like i'm interested in this <laughs> so. well i mean as far as i know it's an intriguing story not that i've ever read it or seen it people are really excited about this final season Although coming as out. we're recording Game of Thrones Season 8 are coming out. Yeah, so this is... This and is again, by the but time anyway. this episode comes out, it will have already come yeah. out. <laughs> it so. will have already come out, right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, ancillary stuff in general, if you're taking it from one medium <laughs> that of the book mm -hmm. or the story to another, it qualifies as ancillary. Yes. So if you're making it a play... If you are making it an audio drama, if you're adapting it for TV, if you're turning it into artwork, a comic book, um, whatever. I mean, we'll talk We'll talk about a couple of things in minor detail as well. There's just a lot of stuff here. Right, right. And, you know, as much fun as it would be to exhaustively list all of these Forwards, things. Forwards, afterwards, um, audio dramas, we'll adaptations, leave... comic books, art, ballroom dancing, and origami. <laughs> Well, I don't know how much ballroom dancing would apply. That's why. Oh, but you're right, that. origami okay. though, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or, well, I mean, origami could you could have a shape that you know is iconic. Cut this out of the book and then fill it this way. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> anyway, no origami. You typically take like blank paper and fold it into a shape. That's not like cutting well, it. Then from you, the book you, you, the book is happy enough to provide a blank page for your origami. <laughs> 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 Remember when we were talking about page count? Yeah, we aren't we aren't counting those blank pages. If you need to rip it out and use it, fifty pages of this book is just blank to, to add to the origami. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! But anyway, um, because we because we are talking about this ancillary stuff. By the way, um, guys, listeners, uh, the we were referencing Ratchet and Clank. I wasn't trying to make an original joke. In case someone's like, oh, actually, that's from Ratchet and Clank, you thief. <laughs> you thief. And I'm like... <laughs> Idea thief. We definitely are. But anyway... I mean, we rip um, off stuff all the time. Includes... It's literally a segment of the show. AKA <laughs> so... a a K a fanfics as well. Short stories, forwards, afterwards. Stuff that's companion to the text, but not essential to the book. Right. But with all of this, there there's rule, rule number one. Yes. Like, literally, if you open the rule book that has yet to be written. Maybe I should write it. <laughs> Maybe that'd be an ancillary uh, rule number material. one <laughs> of <laughs> it would be well what, for what story? <laughs> I don't know. The Book of Life, not the movie, not the animated movie. Anyway, but... <laughs> if you're published, if you're a published creator, you mean don't you mean the Game of Life? Oh, it's a fun board game. Yeah, but there's also a movie called <laughs> oh, the Book games, of Life too. Why didn't I so... think of that? Why didn't I think about that? Video games. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, the video game adaptations of your book. Those common things. <laughs> or, well, like, you know, when the you're making Bionicle... Or when you're making Bionicle Park Tycoon. Or making an RTS based off of your book, Megazoic. <laughs> uh, I would love to make an RTS. I keep trying, but it's difficult. You keep planning, that's for sure. <laughs> that's all ancillary stuff. Anyways, uh. <laughs> if you are a published creator... Yes. If you are a published creator and you open the rule book, the first rule that's there, once it's out of your hands, anyone will twist, contort, turn it however they wish. Yes. Be prepared to not always like their choices. <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting. Like, um, H.P. Lovecraft, uh, when he did his Lovecraft's uh, l lore with all the Cthulhu and stuff, he, he published it right. deliberately as public domain. Because he won people, he encouraged other people to make their own stories in the canon of love, of Cthulhu mythos, which I think is kind of cool. He's encouraging that. So, it's a very, it's, he, he's encouraging it. That's really a neat thing for an author. Yeah. To so do. I could write a story about Cthulhu too... right now and get it published. So, yep, I can't think of two. Well, and you know, that's before we talk about freelancing, right? So like. Star Trek, Star Wars are both oh, well, notorious. Well, like also like all the fan fiction, yeah, of just that you don't plan well, to making money on. And, but yeah, and obviously, I've said, I, I think I've even said on this podcast before that comic books are just a gigantic orgy of fan fiction. <laughs> they right? certainly are, aren't they? 
because you get this creator telling the story they want to tell with this character. And if they get that opportunity, that's what they're going to do. Right. You know, I mean, if it weren't published officially by the company, it would be considered fan fiction. Yes. <laughs> so, you know. Well, as well um, as all the other authors, public comic book writers. But yeah, I mean, free, their own freelancing, but yeah. freelancing stuff, freelancing stuff, obviously it's ancillary to a certain canon. But this is more like but the stuff that like is in the written by the author himself. That's like other things, I think. So. Sure. Well, and that and that's what I was gonna. I was about to tie it into the fact right. that this is more about the story that you have made, and it's additional to that story. Right. Right. And that's why we're not going too in depth on fan fiction here. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and and we want to do an episode on fan fiction <laughs> someday. So we keep talking about it, but anyway. Um, there are various types of this. Um, also, for those of you who are up on, you know, the reason, the real, quote unquote, real reason the internet exists, <laughs> you're probably aware of a certain rule. I will not cite it for those who are not, you know, old enough to consume these things, but that might Oh, you're that talking about rule 34. Yes. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Google it, listeners. Trying not to do that. <laughs> Don't Google it if you're underage. Okay, fine. Well, now they want to Google it, so I'll just tell them. The rule is that if there's anything, (laughs) there must be porn of it. (laughs) There is a companion rule to that, that rule 35, if it does not exist, it will be created. (laughs) There you go, listeners. (laughs) Um, And also, there's another rule in that same vein that there is probably an opposite gender version of your character out there. Oh, yeah, I've heard that one. Somewhere. That's a good one. I don't remember what rule it is, but it doesn't matter. These <laughs> these on. are not rules you should be aware of. That's why I was trying not to say the number, but thanks anyway, Donald. No problem. Glad to help. <laughs> glad, to, glad to help him do what? Anyway. I don't know. I'm glad that. Glad that. <laughs> this, is, this is why I said contort and turn it however they yeah, wish. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. And you, you, may not, you may not always like their choices. Right. However... There are various kinds of ancillary material, main kinds of ancillary material, including the encyclopedia. Perfect for all your info dumping needs. <laughs> Isn't it just? But seriously, it's info dumping. It is, so but that's get the it point, out of your so... story. <laughs> get it out of your story. It doesn't belong in the in the main narrative. Yeah, put it right? in the ancillary material, yeah. That's why we're talking about exactly. it. Exactly. Um a rule of thumb. A rule of thumb for encyclopedias, again, going back to how people will contort things however they want. Right. If you want it explicitly stated, you should do it. Yes. You should state it. So it's out there and, you know, theoretically published as well. Right, right, right. That's why J.K. Rowling always keeps chiming in on all these these speculation things. Uh, actually, in Hogwarts, like they didn't have toilets or whatever it is she said. <laughs> that was... <laughs> Did you hear about this one? No. But I, but I believe that things like that have happened. It was but, like I mean, they didn't the have toilets you... for like up to like a couple a couple decades ago, and they just teleport magically oh, teleported right. their their and they waste. teleported it out. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> I do, I do. And I'm like, reading J.K. That. Jeez, J.K. Man, just J.K. It's just a joke, oh, right? Yeah, but no, anyway. I was just like, uh... <laughs> God, there are some things that we don't need to know. <laughs> Like I've got... But because of the curious minds of various fans that are passionate in various levels, you know, unless you say it, they will assume or surmise anything they want to. Right. Well, like, okay, so here's and something. This, is why... this might be a little adult, but I'm not going to go into graphic detail oh, here. <laughs> but here's a question okay. that I actually have received uh, about my book Megazoic several times. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... I have mentioned that they uh, that th- they reproduce through the labs. I mentioned this actually in a previous episode before, where we were talking about prologues. <laughs> so, right. Oh, wow, that's such a rough one. Okay. Um, so they because there's so many different species, the dinosaurs, uh, what they do is that each dinosaur is required by law for one time in their life to donate some of their blood to a lab, and they got like a genetic pool of all the la- of all the DNA of each dinosaur. 
and they get enough of each species so that they, they're all the species characters of the same species aren't exact clones of each other. They're all mixed up, you know. Well, unless well, unless you're a Triassic dinosaur, in which case they say screw you. You won't get over those Triassic dinosaurs. That's fine. I will never get over that. Triassic. Even though I've told you before <laughs> that a lot of the Triassic dinosaurs survived into Jurassic times, and therefore, <laughs> anyways, enough about that. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, anyway, so. That, that, so you a couple can be of any two species, and then they, if they want a child, they go to the labs, they pay them to, to genetically create the kid, and then they get the egg of the kid, then they raise it there. However, a question I have still a, have received, do the dinosaur couples, even once a different species, have sex? <laughs> Purely for pleasure. Well, I mean, if, the, if such a means exists, And the answer is yes, by the way. <laughs> they can. Oh. Well, I mean, I was, I was gonna say if their bodies are compatible, and a lot of times they if are, if, if their anat, if their anatomies are compatible, and theoretically they should be able. Anyways, to. not to get into too graphic of a detail, but basically, if anyone cares, yes, the answer is yes, assuming that they're compatible. And if, <laughs> anyway, so now all we need, note. now all we need is a gigantic public forum that includes all these things where you can chime in, and people have said no, I, th- this is not what I meant. <laughs> anyway, anyways, now I've opened up the gates to Rule Thirty Four of Megazoic. So, <laughs> all I gotta say is, what do you think they do with Pokemon? Moving I don't, on. I think the better question is, what don't they do with Pokemon? <laughs> 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 True as that may be. Anyways. All right, so it is a ton of work to do an encyclopedia. Yes. <laughs> it isn't. It is a ton of work because, like, where do you stop? Right. How much do you include? The slog itself may be fun for you. Writing alternate histories, for example, right. we mentioned a couple episodes ago our mutual online friend who does these alternate history type <laughs> things. Yes. But giving up halfway doesn't do anyone much service. No, exactly. Like uh, I've definitely tried. So maybe to... hold off on tackling this project. Yeah, like... Unless you couldn't explain the story without one. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. Like, and even then, yeah. this is supplementary material, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, no, like, I've definitely so, tried to, like... Write, I want to write a, uh encyclopedia about Megazoic that, like, explains all the different places, of, like, the factions, their leaders, like, the real details. Like, I explained a little bit of it in the books, obviously. But, like, the real details about it. Like, the rest of the world, the more details, the old civilization, all the, like, all this stuff. And you have that information stored in your head somewhere, yes. so it'd be cool to get it out. Yeah, but I need. But However, if I do it, I need to finish it, basically. Or I don't know. Exactly. Like you shouldn't. You shouldn't do it half. You shouldn't do it. Uh, pardon, pardon the terminology. You shouldn't do it half-assed. If it's <laughs> something you want to do, you do it. If it's something that you aren't going to commit to doing, don't yes. do it. Like obviously, it's something you need to know. Right. We've talked about that before, yes. <laughs> but. If it's something you want to share, you need to commit to doing the thing full hog and get it done. Right. There can be these can be real fun to add extra meat to your stories. If you like having that extra meat there. Right. I'm sorry, I'm stealing. That. <laughs> That's okay. It's a good analogy. I invite you to use it. <laughs> yes. Um, and and something else that might be helpful yeah is you know getting help <laughs> possibly it is a big project i mean yeah it is a big project that said that said if you are the creator you have creative control. yes you do if it's an encyclopedia about your story and you're not talking co-author in this situation you're talking like you're asking a friend to help you compile this because you want to get it done and it's a lot harder to do by yourself. right right they have to answer to you yes but if they're willing to help you it make does make it a little bit easier. Right, right. It's why Wikipedia and all those online sites are edit are, are able to be edited by anyone. Right. Because that means that somebody who actually cares about the material will do it justice. Yes. Whether it's their own or not. Right, right, right. And that way you can make sure it's all factual, valid, without having problems. Right, there. right, right. So I mean, encyclopedias are more trouble than they're worth, <laughs> but they can be very rewarding yes. if you do it. Yeah, I think they're fun. Um, I think. Yeah. All right. Anything you choose to do after you've finished the story is your business. Take it or leave it. Yes. But it all qualifies as ancillary, whether it's the same medium or even a different one. Right. We talked about going to video games, artwork, that kind of thing. 
That's all ancillary stuff. If it's, you do it, it's all ancillary yeah, stuff. If somebody basically. else does it, it's all ancillary stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that sounds good. Well, so I guess now we're talking about forwards and afterwards, right? And, like, and I like what, like, sure. one of the notes you have here, uh, forwards, apologize in advance? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> sorry, guys, but I'm writing this book anyways, and I got it published against all of your uh, will. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really sorry. None of you guys asked for this book, but I'm doing it anyway. Please read it. <laughs> <laughs> or don't, you know? <laughs> it's up to you. Or don't. Uh, but also, you know, that's a, it's a great place to thank their loved ones, all your loved ones yeah, for like their your support dedication. But that's like, that's you during this time. Right. Right. I mean, maybe... I mean, that's, that's pretty standard, standard fare. Uh, I do want to, I do want to mention though, I, I didn't put the term and you just said the dedication thing. That's kind of what this is. Yeah. Kind of. But four words, four words. Um, one way that you could use them to relate them to the story is if you wanted to, you could talk a little bit about the insight. Where did the idea come from? When right. did you start writing it? That kind of a thing. You could use the foreword for that. Right. You can also. Are, are we going to a lot of times before I just do the segue? Yeah. What? What were you I was going to do. You can also use the afterword for that. Right. Well, one other thing I was going to say about forewords was that Sorry, a lot of times they're written by a different person. Like a lot, of, I see that a lot for books. They're like this book, and it says yeah, forward, forward by whoever. So. Yeah, that's and, true. And a lot of times it's like if it's like for a classic, and they're like, "This is when I first discovered this book." <laughs> what the foreword is, right? Or yeah, like, that's true. Or, or like, somebody, especially if it's something like translated by somebody, you know, right, the right. translator will talk about how I I discovered this book and it was lovely, so I just needed to make sure it was in my native language, kind yep. of thing. <laughs> like like Beowulf. But yeah, usually <laughs> forewords are in scholarly in scholarly texts. They talk about the circumstances surrounding when this guy wrote the thing, and it's a it's a very analytical source of information about the motivations for writing. Uh, they do this a lot with music as well. I really appreciate that detail as a music fan, and I'm sure well, yeah, there are course. quite a few people that are interested in this kind of thing, <laughs> scholarly researcher types and whatnot. Yeah, but if you have it. You know, if you're writing it yourself, right? Then it's probably mostly just a dedication kind of a thing. Of course. <laughs> so thanks for bringing that up. I I did put that down on this. Yeah, list. no problem. No problem. Anyway, if you want to do more about the why I wrote this kind of a thing, yeah. generally authors will do that in an afterword, right. which is generally them. Right. Okay. So, uh, and sim- similar to congrat- and similar to apologizing in advance, <laughs> the afterward, I kind of, I kind of think, well, it's congratulating the readers for actually making it. <laughs> yep, you didn't put the book down. Thank you. <laughs> here's a prize. <laughs> here is here's here a prize. This origami p- thing of paper for you. Eternal gratitude. No. Eternal gratitude. You can use the next 50 pages to make shapes. <laughs> yeah, send me a swan that you've made out of my book, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh this God. is usually home to fun anecdotes about the process or your inspiration um, yeah. one one author in particular I read quite a lot uh, Dean Kuntz yes. is amazing at making these enjoyable because he, he puts in his sense of humor into into these afterwards you get to learn more about the writer than the story but right. you know he's talking about the process of creating the story too so it, yeah. it does have some relation admittedly um, this is this is simply something that you include in the in the cover anyway right, for right, fun. Right. Well, another example I think for like uh, an, uh, something to put afterward the story. A lot of people have suggested this for my book, and I think I'll probably do it uh, do it once like a bigger publisher gets a hold of it. A lot of people have suggested that I have like a species list at the end. That's like oh, yeah. that's like to help describe them for people that just to give people a reminder. Like, cause like I describe them a little in their first introduce, and of course I always say like uh, like throughout this one's the little one, this one's the big one, this one's the long neck one, this one's the spiky one. But like for people, but who you want don't hard... put all of that detail in every time, right? So if people want like a hard and fast description, like that they, they want it like in the back, and I'm like that's probably a good idea. I haven't done it yet because I've been lazy. Well, but... and one, well, and because you know you're self publishing, so it costs more money, right? Time. Exactly. But, um, the other the other thing that I've desired for a long time and i'm sure you'll you'll know what i'm talking about assuming before i even say it now is i really want a size comparison chart yeah well a lot of people want that too i probably for all these i'd have the picture that my illustrator natasha had but then i'd add like a little stick figure by it that's like or like it oh, shows compare. like the size com- it compared to a normal human so sure i don't know maybe um other uh before we get into fanfics because <laughs> 
uh, I want to probably rant just a little bit more about that than the others. Go ahead. Uh, let's go ahead and talk. Let's go. Well, well, eventually before I get, get there, there <laughs> before I get there, uh, some other things that, you know, just some quick, just, just some quick one liners about these, I guess. What, yes. what anything you want to add about, say, audio dramas? Um, there can be have fun versions of them. Like they can they can make fun to like do something new with it. But be careful because if you guys, as you guys might know of history, uh, Orson Welles did. Uh, I think it was Orson Welles did War of the Worlds and and the book about the aliens invading. And but he did the audio drama as if it was a news story. <laughs> That was unfolding <laughs> right now, and there was a mass panic <laughs> from people who thought it was real. That's true, that's, and but that's even, a fun and, way to do back it. Then, yeah. and, and back then, too, I seem to remember that was like the golden age of radio serials. Yeah, I think it was in like the 30s or the 40s. Like so it was before like TV. When, so when when the shadow the shadow was still on the on the airwaves and stuff like that. Right. So you know it's. It's one of those things that audio dramas are quite nice because there there can be multiple versions of literally the same thing even if right. you want because it's theoretically different casts. I I also by the way when I say audio dramas I'm also including audio books which I right. realize aren't quite the same thing. Yeah. But you know audio dramas are short version are short like little jaunts short tales so like Rhea for example. Oh my god! You won't you won't <laughs> let that go. <laughs> Well, I no, I I'm bringing it up because it is a good example for this. Ah, I suppose. Like, well, so uh, like you I... have so you have this audio drama. You you add special effects and character, mm-hmm. and, well, actors doing voice line, recorded lines and stuff like that, right. and you can make and make a story that's consumable only by listening. Right. Which right. is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's a really, it's a really neat thing. I, as I said, I'm including audiobooks, but obviously they're somewhat separate as well. Right, right. Uh, if you do it yourself, it's really, it's a labor of love. You've got to want to do it. You need to have, you need to be good at manipulating your voice to do a lot of things. <laughs> um, one of the things that I worry about, and this is me, and I know that, yeah, yeah, some, a lot of people have this opinion too. It's hard to do voices of the opposite gender, but for some reason, it's easier for women to act more convincingly as a boy than it is for a man to the, act that to Adam's to apple girl. really gets in the way <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to fake an Adam's apple than fake not having one <laughs> well I suppose that's true but anyway um, having having manipula- manipulability in your voice also not being afraid to use sound effects or like you know affecting your recording itself to change that that's something that you could do if you just look take the time to learn about the technology like audacity you can do quite a few of those things as well right um so you know it's fun you should try it yeah absolutely i'm not saying you have to complete even the story but you know you should at least try it and see what it's like because it will make it will help you appreciate what all of these people do when they're recording audiobooks for a living and it's really cool like i i kind of think it would be a neat career if i didn't have like a bunch of other things on the waiting list (laughs) again you'd like to multiply yourself so you can Cover everything you'd want exactly. to do. Exactly. If I had a nickel for every time I wish I had a clone, I would be a millionaire, and I could probably just make a dang cloning machine. But anyway, <laughs> um, adaptations. Again, any other medium. The movie of the adaptation. book. <laughs> the movie of the book. The video game of the book. If you want to the make video a game play of the out movie. of something. The movie of the video game. Both of those are usually terrible. <laughs> so. Art from the film, inspired by the comic book, which actually was birthed from a radio serial. I mean, all of these things are adaptations, right? Yeah. Um, so it could be artwork. It could be audio something. It could be game something. It could be a different screen. So film to small screen to a, a script format, whatever it is. Right. There are a bunch of different ways. It could be changing languages. It could be translating a work. Right, right, exactly adaptations so i mean there's a lot of stuff there it i mean if you make it that big that's really freaking cool might as well like might as well go for it and speaking of going well, for mean, it <laughs> should we just let you rant on at this episode that's going way longer than i thought it would before before i get into my rant though i have one other thing to do all right and that is um short stories why am I not doing this separately? Because short stories, I'm referring to ones written by the same author. 
and and usually take the place in the jaunt. same universe within they usually take place in the same like literally it could fill a gap of time you had in the story for various reasons just because you didn't want to clog down your narrative pace but it's whatever. somehow but different like, from an interlude and for more clog, on that no, no. clog <laughs> clog down clog down is another thing clog up anyway sorry did, uh, did i say that yeah, or did you stories, say that no i i did okay I good because i could have believed that i said that <laughs> Anyway, short stories. I mean, it basically it basically is an interlude being pulled out. Right, right. Is what it is. Right. Um, especially because it's going to be about the same length as a regular chapter, probably a little bit longer, depending on the story itself. And, and they're fun. They're ways to explore the characters. Like I tend to do this even before I finish the work itself. I'll <laughs> tend to like just pull them in, put them into a room, and have them react to a situation that's presented to them. Right. Because it helps me get into the character's head a little bit better. It helps me understand their, you know, motivations, right. their emotional responses, yeah. which helps me write them better. Of course. And so maybe it's this thing that you want to do that's not as that has no bearing on the story you're trying to tell. Right. Uh, again, indulging your tangents, <laughs> but instead of keeping it within the cover that you're, you know, putting in one package, you're separating it. Right. Right. So I do like those, um, along with short stories. That's that's a place where you can experiment with genre. Yes, yes, a lot. That, that I mean, that's so kind of like, a fun thing to do. Like, if your story's not like that's kind of have a certain so tone. So you put these people into a noir detective thing just for the fun of it, you right? Know? Or like just this one's because. a horror thing, so right. And to see, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But yeah. you know, you get to try that because it's not changing tones, changing styles right in the middle of your main story, right? Right, exactly. Um, you know that kind of thing. Also, comedies. Uh, in that vein as well, going from tragedy, drama to comedy. <laughs> Something awesome. about comedies, I think we mentioned before, uh, script writing versus uh, prose writing. Yes. I tend to like comedies that are done in script format because, like, you expect it's it's to easier be... for the beat of the story. Like, I think like it's it... it's far easier for the beat of the story. Plus, it's a lot easier to envision this being read out at like across a table, right. As kind of a fun thing, absolutely, rather yeah. Than, oh, it's a book, which means you have to somehow let the prose not take over the jokes. <laughs> right. Well, that's why a lot of times when there's so, humor in my um, book, it's purely through dialogue. So, like, sure, because that's yeah. 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 Okay. So yes, fanfics. And you've you've given me you've given me permission to rant. So I'm gonna get up, step up on my soapbox. Oh God, and... you've already been talking for quite a lot in this episode. Let's, yeah, sure. Let's have you talk for a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you have anything to add, please let me know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, that's fine. Go ahead. So mature. Uh, <laughs> fanfics. There, there are two main branches of the idea of fan fiction the first is taking an existing concept an existing character of from that concept and using it to tell a story you want to tell right so in in my i'm gonna use power rangers dear near and dear oh, to my heart of as course an <laughs> of course so one this one kind of fanfic is represented by a story I did called Three Way, which used the same characters from the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. Right, those, right. those six Rangers I used. Right. That's this kind of fanfic. You're taking a character that's already established and doing what you want with it. Right. You exactly. can insert your own characters yes. to interact with the these OCs too. That's that's the same that's the same type of fanfic. Yeah. The other kind of fanfic is using the framework of something. Yeah. But using your own characters and coming up with your own story. Again, right. using Power Rangers. These are my original teams. They don't have any connection to the characters that have come before, but the framework is based on Power Rangers. Right, right. Some shows, some concepts lend themselves to this. Others don't. Right, exactly. Power Rangers is pretty good because you just get some source of power and you have your own arsenal, and you have your own villains to fight, and good always triumphs over evil, that <laughs> kind of a thing. Right? Yeah. Well, it's also like... But so Bion it's really easy. Yeah. There are some things... Well, well like with Bionicle, it's easy like to do fanfics for that, too, and come up with your own characters. Like, come up with a Toa, come up with a mask, come up with a weapon, come up with an element. Boom! Exactly. Boom, you got your story. Well, yep. I don't know how many more elements you need to come up with, because they do a pretty... They did have a Bionicle. set list, but, but, you know, on fan creation, you could come up with whatever, so... But it, but that's the thing. It's fan creation. Yeah. The and and these, 
these are ancillary. Yes, yes. However, in the term in the terminology itself, and I said earlier, comic books are gigantic orgy of fans. Well, of course. <laughs> this explicitly means that it is a fan derivative work. Yes. These are not you. They may be good enough to be ancillary to you might decide that you like what this person did. You may decide you absolutely freaking hate it. <laughs> but this is not your work. Right. Unless you're going from another concept. Yes. Or you're borrowing a character. Yes. So, um, but I wanted to talk about more of this because it it could be ancillary and it's near and dear to yeah, my maybe, heart. Maybe, maybe. you uh, have a fan base. Maybe the creator yeah. really is proud of a certain type of fan fiction. He actually puts it in an edition of the book at the beginning or something or at the end. Sure. Like, uh, for more on this, please see this person's this person's story, and you can find it here. Right, exactly. Kind of thing, which is really freaking yeah, like, well, like a really seg- segment cool. of it. Yeah, and then have the link to the full thing or something. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it it's kind of reductive to say, but if you're not a fan of your own work, why are you doing it? <laughs> for the money, I guess. Sometimes people do stories just for the money. Like Charles Dickens only wrote A Christmas Carol for the money, apparently, and it ended up being his most famous story. So. <laughs> Which, hey, it was a good story. But, you know, if the you can be a fan of other people using your work, too. You right. don't have to be. Yeah, of course. But you can be. I... But if Sometimes you, it's not allowed, though, for you to look at your own, at fanfics. Uh, I'm assuming, like, especially while you're writing the story. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're, if you're not done writing the story, right. you probably shouldn't look at fanfics because that's going to possibly influence what you're Yeah, doing. but, like, since, like, so, I, like, I've finished writing the Megazoic series. Well, not all the books are out yet. And, of course, if I ever get, like, a bigger publisher, they'll probably want to publish them all the time anyway. So, but for now, I could, if it ever comes to a point where people are writing Megazoic fanfiction, I, I could say, read it if now. you had people... <laughs> if you had people writing it, which if you have a fan base passionate enough to write their own fiction about your for your story, you're really damn good at your task for one thing, <laughs> and for another thing, it really helps to encourage them. Opposed you know my to old, simply bashing their efforts. You know my old Megazoic, which had the thing of Rhea that you love so much. <laughs> it had a lot of fan fiction from you and from our New Zealand friend. <laughs> so that is true. That so, ha, huh, I'm damn well, I mean, good based on your really, own words. Nah. <laughs> I, I never I never deny that. Oh, well, thank you. You're not as successful, perhaps, but you no. are damn good. Well, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so it really... Not helps. successful, but damn good. That's going to be on my gravestone. <laughs> <laughs> he just needed to be more famous. Yeah, my epitaph <laughs> is like, yeah, he wasn't successful, but he was damn good anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, but I, if you're going to if you're going to have fans that want to contribute their own ideas to the canon, <laughs> it helps to encourage them. Yeah. Keep l- giving them the opportunity to write. You might not agree with everything, but that doesn't mean you should just squash them trying. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. Even if, well, on page 96, I clearly meant when she said we're not getting together, I meant ever, guys. <laughs> Stop shipping them, please. <laughs> You know what? I encourage people to ship the weirdest characters together. Sh- <laughs> ship, uh, like, ship Zack, my character Zack, and his bazooka. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I mean, actually, that's probably halfway canon, honestly. <laughs> that, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, I mean, if it's something, if it's something like that, yes, obviously it's not your intent, but you're not in charge of writing that story. Absolutely. At that point. At that point. If you want to say it, as we said with the encyclopedia, if you want to say it, then you need to say it. Yes. Otherwise, they have just as much license with it as they as you do. It's their ideas. It's their personal expression. I am getting... I'm stepping down off my soapbox. Okay, good job. There. Because You're we are 50 heart. minutes into this things. episode that we thought would be by far the shortest. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how plans change when reality happens. Well, I mean... I, I found out that there is more worth saying about all these various things. Well, yeah, so, I guess not nothing wrong with that, I guess. Anyway, so are we done, though, with consider ancillary? consider that there's probably, other, there's probably other things that we could have talked about. We're skipping it, of course, but, yes. you know, ancillary material is very broad. If you have, uh, um, if you have any... Speaking like, of ancillary material, let's talk about how to get a contact with us. <laughs> so. 
Well, I was gonna I was gonna go ahead oh. and say because speaking of fans, oh, um, that's you know, a better normally, segue. Normally <laughs> we read, you're welcome. Thanks. Normally we'd read fan mail on the air. Uh, if it's requested by the person sending it in, we we did not have any that wanted us to share that with them this time. Uh, thanks for sending those in. Yes, we hope you liked the responses and please keep listening to the show. Yes. Um. Oh, and while we're at it, and we have not mentioned this ever on the other episodes oh. thus far, please, please rate, review, and all that stuff. I think we've said that uh, once or really twice, but yes, podcast. please do. We've got several ratings on no, iTunes, we, but we, we need more. Well, we're greedy. No, no, no. What I'm, what I'm saying is, in this set, we haven't said it. Oh, uh, I get. Oh, in this set, yes. <laughs> no. Anyway, so uh, we really do appreciate you sending the sending in the feedback. It's it's so nice to interact with you guys, and we'd like to do that more. So please, if you have yes. questions, if you'd like us to share them on the air, we will totally do that. Will like. do. So please let us know. I'm very excited. Oh, and if you wanna if you want us to share things on the air, and you want to send those to us, how do you do that? Oh uh, well, you contact us at Matt D with two T's at MatthewDonaldCreator.com for any general questions to it, either co-host. Please specify it's which one. It's in the description. It's spelled in the description, so if you're yes. having trouble, please just look at that. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, follow, if you want to follow me personally, you follow me at Matthew Donald Creator on Facebook, at Matthew Donald 64 on Twitter, and Matthew Donald 64 on Instagram. Why 64? Because I'm 64 pounds. I'm six foot two, and I'm 64 pounds. I am really that is... dangerously skinny, David. Feed me. Yeah. Um, well, I was, I was thinking about getting my lunch started here, but, uh, I guess give I me some of it. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Yeah. So absolutely. If you, if you've got questions for us, please do send those in. We'd love to hear from you more. Yes. Uh, if you've got episode ideas, we encourage that as well. <laughs> yes. Um, we've talked a lot about ancillary materials, so we're going to sign off for this week. Uh, yep. but until next time. Yep. Keep writing. Keep keep writing. I'm Matt David. I'm Matt Donald. Um, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. The Redway.